Aircraft making a condensation trail is very similar in many ways to when you go outside on a cold day and exhale, you create a condensation trail. That little cloud is a condensation trail. Now, if you take a two mile walk on a cold day and you can turn around and you can see your condensation trail tracking all the way back for two miles, that's how crazy it is to think that what we're looking in the sky is actually condensation trails. The contrails, not the chemical, the contrails occur because of cold air, minus 30. It takes a high altitude, around 30,000 feet plus. There's a carbon dioxide and water vapor in that exhaust. That turns to ice crystals, and that's what you see, the white stream behind it. Those white crystals of ice warm up, dissolve, and the smoke goes away and it never lasts more than a minute. What we're seeing now, and I first could not believe it, and I started looking at the skies, and these are not normal, they're not natural. There's something going on, I don't know who it is or why they're doing it. All I can testify is it's not natural and it's not normal. It's gotta be some outside influence doing that. Thank you. I'm here to give you testimony that chemtrails, they're not contrails, are indeed real. They're spraying almost every day. I watch the clouds and watch the spraying program going on. I want to tell you that we're in very great danger from the pollution that's coming down over us. And we've been led astray by the military industrial complex. And they're responsible for the clouds creation and weather manipulation programs. They're dark operations. That's why they're not out in the media. I look around and I see people are starting to look up and see this. Many times I've spoken about chemtrails, and I get this blank look on my face. What are you talking about? I'm saying, look up. As a pilot, but before I fly, I look up. And so, boy, they're really out there working. When you look up at the sun and you see a white haze, that is aluminum floating in the air right now, and it's coming from the aircraft. There's a huge amount of uh, aluminum being found because these sprays have aluminum, strontium, barium, manganese. And uh, there's a lot of argument that aluminum is very common to be found. But aluminum is only common in a bonded form. It's not common in a free form, and we're finding high rates of free aluminum uh, in the soil, which is not natural. The metal compounds that are being used are environmentally dangerous. We need to be monitoring them. We need to be testing them. Okay, these previous guys, I've watched exactly what they do, and yes, they are correct. I've seen exactly the same stuff, so ditto marks on those. You want some figures? Okay, latest water test, tested the rain. 13,100 micrograms per liter of aluminum in the rain in 2013. Normally, it should be zero. So 13,100 is pretty damn much, folks. It used to be zero, then it was 100s in the 2000s. And then in, uh, since 2010, it's into the 1,000s and the latest 13,100. In the snow on Mount Shasta, pristine Mount Shasta, 61,000 micrograms per liter, four times the amount that is found in the soil up there. Where in the hell is this stuff coming from if it's not coming from the soil? We have clouds in the sky we've never seen before. Almost every day I'm seeing clouds I've never seen before. And NASA has been even named a few of these new clouds. Uh, and it's, it's really interesting, but NASA is a corporation. I want you to know that. Uh, NASA has also uh, conducted a research program in what they call metallized fuels. We're actually putting aluminum oxide right in the fuel because it has two atoms of aluminum and three atoms of oxygen. So during the combustion process, it releases all that oxygen and dramatically increases efficiency, but it leaves the aluminum in the air. We got things coming from sky down, and it's a huge, huge problem. Because as it comes down, what happens is a couple of things. Is that it actually is in our air, we breathe it. And as we breathe it, it's actually gonna go up through our nostrils, into our brain, easiest access to our brain frontal lobe. The contaminants that are in, that have been identified, which already been mentioned, are aluminum. Aluminum is the number one neuro, uh, free radical generator to the brain to cause early apoptosis, which is early death of brain, and it begins to set off the scar tissue, which we call the amygdalin, which is, a pot, which is part of the uh, chemical matrix related to Alzheimer's. I'm a neurologist practicing in Reading for 17 years, and in the past five years, I've seen the number of patients 
with Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, and other neurodegenerative diseases tremendously increased, almost quadruple. Uh, I became interested in chemtrails about eight years ago when I was in Hawaii, and the Hawaiians are really being very vocal about it. I concur about the increase in number of Alzheimer's. They have been able to take the aluminum and micronize it, which means it'll stay up longer. But it also means, and I don't know if any of you have noticed some metallic taste in your mouth when they're spraying, but you inhale that, it goes up through your cribriform plate and into your, through your sinuses and into the brain. As you heard, to spray nanoparticles, very small particles, these nanoparticles, they basically trigger a programmed cell death in the brain. And that is the ultimate pass we see in Alzheimer's. That's problem number one, because when we look at the Alzheimer issue, we say those are the old. The real problem is, and the real scare I have, is as I am a father of two, I am a grandfather of three. So the drama is, is our children. ADD started in the 70s. Autism was not on the radar. There was no documents, there was no information. It was one in 100,000 children. Today, what we have is one in 48 boys. I was part of the early group that was looking for aluminum in ADD and ADHD. And all of those children that started to develop those phenomena had high levels of aluminum. When we figured out protocols to detox them out, to free the body of those particular contaminants, what happened is that their brains came back. When we do this to the age, it doesn't come back as quick, but it will come back. But I'm seeing Alzheimer's in 56 years old. Back in the 70s, Alzheimer's when you were 80. If you remember eight to 10 years ago, there was this big move to get rid of aluminum from underarm deodorant is what calls Alzheimer's. <laughs> Look what they're doing to us now. I want to give you a little bit of history on the background behind nanoparticles has been described before. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter. It's very small. In fact, if you have particles, say, that are 40 or 50 nanometers across, you can take and line 50 of them up next to a single red blood cell. These things are extremely tiny. They're pervasive. The collapse and decrease of agriculture is something I worry about even more than the previous info about autism and Alzheimer's. Believe me, I'm seriously concerned with what I'm watching. As a wildlife biologist, I've been watching the ecosystem collapse. When you lose all your stream organisms, when you have aluminum overload in your streams, you're killing your microbial bacteria, and you're disrupting the entire ecosystem. So it goes way beyond just a little bit of pollution. Um, how did Monsanto know to create aluminum-resistant plants? I don't think I've heard anybody ask that question. Okay. Insects. I've done studies in Siskiyou County. They're at 20% of normal. The aquatic insects ma basically made a nosedive in 2006 to about 20% of normal. So far this year, I've sampled 200 trout stomachs. 98% of them are empty. So uh, sorry about the trout fishing fellows. The mayflies, stoneflies, dipteris, and caddisflies are uh, damn near gone. The terrestrial sampling is down to about 20% of normal, except for pest species like ants. Uh, we're seeing a loss of the major bird species, and as the gentleman said, the ecosystem is unraveling, and Audubon's been telling you that for years. The materials that are going into the environment right now, aluminum oxide nanoparticles and barium nanoparticles, these just happen to be the same materials that they use in nanothermate explosives. And so when this stuff settles down out of the air into the environment, it is small enough to be absorbed through the root structure of the trees in the forest. And so when there's a forest fire, and there will be a forest fire, those fires burn dramatically hotter. The point is that the, the, the cost of firefighting, the cost in the, in the healthcare system have nearly doubled in the last 10 years. The amount of acreage is lost because of fires. The impact on human health is dramatic. I personally tested uh, water and aluminum and I found aluminum had 47 times the normal expected amounts. Uh, strontium had 10 to 20 times the amounts. Barium was 20 times. This is what the stuff looks like here. I collected, it looks, most people just think it's a cobweb, but I tested it, it has outrageous amounts of barium, strontium, and aluminum, but they destroy the sample, so I'm not letting this get away from me. You know, these tests are international. 
in scope. We're seeing this all over the world, guys. Okay, pH of acid soils is 20 times more alkaline. The aluminum in the soil has doubled in the last 10 years. The rain normal was 5.6, it's 20 times more alkaline. Aluminum blocks essential nutrients. I am unable in my garden to restore normal pH, and that's because nanoparticles are now in the circulatory systems of both plants and humans. The Air Force conducted a study starting in 1993. It was called In Vitro Toxicity of Aluminum Nanoparticles in Rat Alveolar Macrophages. That's a real fancy way of saying testing the effect of aluminum nanoparticles on the white blood cells in the little air sacs in your lung, the alveoli. And what they found in this eight-year study was that these particles, when you're exposed to them long enough, it suppresses the ability of your white blood cells to defend you from airborne infections coming into your lungs. So it suppresses your immune system. But they also found that these same particles, once they get into your system, they can actually go through the barrier in each one of the cells. They get inside the cells, and these particles can actually suppress the ability of mitochondria, which are in the cells that help to gobble up toxins and things that would be harmful to the nucleus and the, the reproduction process of the cells in your body. These processes are suppressed, and so essentially by breathing this material in, your immune system is dramatically suppressed. I wrote to the federal government because Air Force wrote a book, and on the first page of the book they said, we're going to control the weather by the year 2025. I asked them, what are they doing spraying this, these chemicals on the public? I said, there's a violation of United States Code 50 U.S.C. 1520, which prohibits the American government from experimenting on the U.S. citizens with chemical agents. I said, that law also requires the, who's ever experimenting when the federal government does it, that they have to report to Congress within 30 days. They wrote back, they said, they don't know what I'm talking about. We have enough evidence that there's a spraying going all, all over the place. Um, we were warned about the takeover of our freedoms by the military-industrial complex by both Eisenhower and Kennedy. They're gaining traction on us, folks. We're, we are in trouble more than just a spraying program. All I can say is it's about time we get up in arms about this because it is affecting our health. It's high time that we as citizens of this great country take action. Board of Supervisors in Suffolk County, New York, they outlawed geochemical engineering. Hawaii passed an ordinance prohibiting geochemical engineering. I urge you to bar geoengineering in Shasta County and pass an ordinance. At least ask some damn questions. What the hell is all this aluminum doing here? Why are the trees dying? Fish is dying? Why is there Alzheimer and aluminum spiking? And why are these fibers on the ground here in Shasta County? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Marmon. Today, the Shasta County Board of Supervisors has been the beneficiary of some sincere, passionate, and knowledgeable comments. And I thank you for those. I am in agreement with my colleagues about sending letters and a call for action, but I would hope that we could go a step further. I would like for us to send a copy of this video where all of you spoke today, all two and a half or three hours of this testimony will be sent to our senators and our U.S. representatives we'll and, also, and also our representatives in the state of California. We'll do that. Let them listen to the passion that came out of this meeting today. Thank you. You have uh, the motion in front of you. I think it's understood. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion passes unanimously. It wouldn't surprise me at all if the response is one that exceeds far the boundaries of Shasta County in terms of the platform that is offered, as evidenced by those who attended today from around the world. That's very impressive.